Marcus Gilchrist, his versatility is, is clear. It has been throughout his career. What does he provide as a, as a nickel corner? Uh, you know, he's pl really playing safety and nickel corner for us. He's a veteran guy, seen a lot of football, smart guy, picked up the playbook in no time. So he gives us a piece so we can move around some. So he's a, he was a good pickup for us for sure. What does having Derek Johnson in the middle the, this defense do for you guys in terms of having a guy who's done it as long as he has and in terms of leadership? He, and, you know, and he's just a guy that's played a lot, again, played a lot of football, seen just about everything there is to see in this league. And he's just coming in here and learning our system. He's picked it up real quick. He's able to get us in and out of defenses. So when you're at that point, the guy's been here for, what, two weeks, two, three weeks now? And he's able to really understand what we're trying to get to. So to have a veteran piece that can kind of control the control the show out there is a big, big important part for me. Well, let's say the system you're installing is is um, complicated or one that's easier for the guys to pick up and go with. Um, I wouldn't say it's complicated. I think we teach concepts and and and, de and techniques and. There's a lot of things that will mix up within those techniques and concepts. So it's it's if you understand this concept, it'll carry over to a different defense, whether it be a blitz or a coverage or a front, whatever it is. If they understand those concepts, it makes us a lot more multiple with everything we're doing. By other coaches around the league, just about how aggressive your front is schematically. What would you say differentiates your defense from maybe some others? Um, just maybe the the looks that we may be able to give, uh, the the matchups we're trying to get to. The, it is a matchup league, whether it be a receiver in a corner, a tight end, and a safety. It could be a three technique on a guard. So, you know, those type of things uh, we've been able to do over the course of time. And these guys, on, they're just really starting to understand. Hey, this is what we're trying to get to. And when we're in the meetings, don't just say yeah, yeah, coach. Say, and I'm I'm trying to explain to you why we're calling these calls and what situations, why we're calling these different things. So, the guys have really been, really the whole group's been a sponge with all everything we're doing. I feel like to install that defense when now you have so many more veterans than you guys had when you were first looking at your roster in January. Well, it is, and it's you know guys from a lot of different systems. So. Some point of it, you know, not only with the coaches who are going through it the first time as a new staff, you get it with the players. So it's important that we're all talking the same language. So we've been through this probably three or four times before the players came in there. I'd get them on the board and make sure we're all on the same page so there's no gray area. And uh, just to have some guys from different systems, you may have some things that they may have some carryover. Hey, you all call it like this and say Kansas City or Houston. It's, this is really what it means here. So it's been, uh, the carryover has been really seamless. How much catching up then is Khalil going to have to do when he shows up? Well, Paulie's going to have a lot of catching up to do, so we're we're going to have to have a plan for that for sure. But really, uh, you know, I'm really concerned about the guys that are here now working. So uh, th this guy's been busting their tails every day, coming in early, meeting with the coaches, being great in meeting rooms, communicating on the field. We did a lot of one-minute situations today, so it was really good to see. What's been the challenge, if at all, for you to uh, to sort of teach your system and for you and your coaches when you do have a player who's supposed to be such a prominent piece of it who hasn't been here? I mean, has it been a challenge for you? No, no, not really. Because like I said, I'm trying to work, get, the, get the guys here that are better. These guys have been busting their tails, trying to get better, trying to make the team. And and there's some guys out there that I really think that have a lot of un covered ability really and we're trying to get it out of them to understand hey you may not be a 60 snap a game guy you may be a 15 snap a game guy and, and be, do the best job in the role and how you can help us win. How does having guys here who have been in your defense before help in terms of the, the other guys learn it and be able to maybe translate some things for them as, and, and do that? It helps it helps for sure because again you know th there may be something that comes up on the practice field where it's happened before those guys have been with me they can kind of explain it to them um, you know, in the meeting rooms, you know, those things. So it's, uh, it's been good to have those kind of guys around. What did you know about uh, and, and how much contact did you ever had with Bruce Irvin before you got here? And what have you learned about him since you've been here? Well, I went and worked him out at West Virginia, and I had a good visit with him. So uh, it was an impressive workout. And I wanted, you know, I was trying to, and since then I really tried to push to draft him, but he went 15th before us to Seattle. And, um, you know, just coming out of college, I know he was a really gifted rusher, good guy, ran fast and 40, really good athlete. So I think that, you know, just coming here, I thought his best asset for us was to go forward rather than go backwards. So he's done a good job with what we're asking him to do in the base fronts. Obviously, we know we can do as a pass rusher. And hopefully, you know, we can give him over a double-digit mark this year. That's a goal for him. Well, I was made of interior pass rush for yep. you guys. What are the impressions of the two rookies that you've got that you added? Well, I mean, I think these guys are going to, you know, when, when you've been in it long enough, you, you kind of know, even in shorts, what it's supposed to look like. And I think both those young guys are really coming along. Obviously, Maurice is probably a little bit ahead of 
PJ because PJ came from a small program, but this past week I've seen PJ make great strides in in the, in the things he's doing. Um, Mar Maurice is Maurice is going to be um, Maurice is, he's played in there. You know, PJ played some men and some no's, so there's some versatility in there. But those guys have done a really good job of picking up Arden the same way. So we got three guys out of this draft that I think are going to really help us. What progress have you seen Conley make these past couple of weeks and months? He's doing good. Well, for mo most importantly, he's out there, you know, and uh, and he's doing good. He's really understanding the little details of everything, the, the press techniques that we're teaching, um, some of the different coverages that we, we have a lot of different coverages in now. So um, he's done a really good job for us. Obi coming along, we saw him out there a little bit. Obi, yeah, yeah. Again, same same thing. It's good to have him out there. I mean, there's there's guys fighting for jobs, and you know, you, you can't at this point in time when everything's new, you know. You know, I'm new here, so I, I like I told him, I don't care what happened here in the past. It's, it's, hey, I'm going to keep the best 22, 23 guys that, that are here that I think can help us win. But, you know, again, he's out there. He's starting to work, which is good to see because he needs to. He needs to be out there playing, not in a training room. So um, it's good to see these back out there. What have you seen so far from Gary on a little bit more on him, and what, what do you hope to see over the course of this offseason? Um, just, you know, we're pretty much done the installation of the defense for the most part. So just to clean up the little details and the footwork and all those type of things. And, you know, what I'll do, what I typically do is I'll, I'll take all the film from what we, we had in the spring and usually I'll write them little notes in between practices or whatever. But usually I'll, I'll give them a little write-up every when they come back here for training camp. These are the things that moving forward I think you need to work on. So, he, uh, like I said, he's doing a really good job. I don't have any, any problems with what he's doing right now. There's a lot of batted passes out there, a couple of interceptions today. What just you know, you've touched on Gary on Gilchrist. What's been your impression of the DBs as a whole and just what the impact they're making on the defense? I, I just think, you know, we're getting, you know, shoot, if you were practice yesterday, we dropped about five picks yesterday. So, you know, we made a big emphasis to turn turning the ball over. Obviously, you know, uh, it's a big part of what we talk about in our meeting rooms, uh, turning the ball over, getting back to our offense. And, you know, we've had some opportunities and you see the guys are getting excited about it. So that's good to see that, you know, they're all Running down there, chasing the guy after he intercepts the ball. So it's uh, it's been good. We've got our hands on a lot of balls. We just got to catch more of them. In the middle of your defense, Ty has been really vocal. You know, he's making a lot of plays up in the middle in the run. Yep. Um, what have you been seeing from him, and just how's he, you know, kind of mentoring some of the younger guys on the team too? Again, he, so he's in the same boat. So you know, you have a lot of these older guys that. Nobody was in the system except for a handful of guys really in the past. So he, in the beginning, he was just trying to learn it on his own. And now he's starting to get it. He's starting to see the bigger picture. And when we, 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 we explain to these guys, you know, you have three phases of the OTAs. OTA one, I do all the installing. OTA two, I start all over again. And then, and then and in OTA three, I get them to come and put them on the board and say, "Okay, hey, Tahir, this is this. You're the wheel linebacker. You get this happen to you. What are you going to do?" So the defensive end hears it in front of him, the three technique, the safety's behind him, so he can see the big picture. We all can see how it fits together. So I think he's really starting to see the big picture now as we start moving forward. A lot of the players that have been up have talked about how these practices kind of make them think on the fly. I mean, you may have a plan going in on how you're going to do something in practice, and all of a sudden John will say, no, we're going to do this. Right. You know, how beneficial has that been for you? And, and beneficial in terms of all the shifts and stuff they're doing on offense is way more than they've done here in the last couple of years. How beneficial is that to see that every day it's, in practice? It's great. It, it's great. You know, I think I was telling John the other day, I think he, he must have looked at our defense and known every – route that beats the coverage so because we've seen you know over the course you know when you're in the defense enough you, you know hey in this coverage this is the snake in this coverage or that that coverage and we've we've, we've seen a lot of these snakes out on the field so it's great to get that on the practice field because you may only have one that comes up on Sunday or for that week or two that may come up before the game that you have to handle and really we're handling that right now in May and June is is, is great. You obviously worked with Jay, now you're working with John. How are they different? How are they similar? Oh, I think they're really kind of both love football, good good football coaches, smart offensive minds, you know, good good motivators. So I think, you know, they're very similar that way. Is there a balance at all as a coach to wanting to make your players uncomfortable, but also to make sure they have their feet under them at this point in the offseason? Yeah, you know, you never want to make them feel too comfortable. But, you know, you, you want to say, hey, this is where we this is where we messed up and this is what we did really good. And every day before I start the meeting of the install, I'll show them, hey, these are the good plays, these are the bad plays we have to clean up. So just to keep them working. So, you know, I want them to feel comfortable in the system, but at the same time, there's more to get to. And we have to get to that step before we get to the to where, where I think we need to be. Early free agency, was Eric Reed a guy that you looked at it all? And did you consider him as a starter, an NFL starter? Or? I did not look at him. I felt good about our safety position, and I really didn't study him much. 
Hank's been a great surprise for us. I think he's a great fit, fit for our system. You know, he's playing base end on first or second down. He's moving inside in the pass rush. He's real smart. He knows what to do. He's understanding the defense, and he's a, he's a strong son of a gun in there. So he's really going to help us out a lot. Nick Morrow came here last year. He's like D3 guy. Love D3 like guys. 75, <laughs> playing like in front of you know, 75 mm -hmm. or 100 yeah. people in the stands, and the next, he makes the team, and mm -hmm. now he's got to go at a whole new system this year. How, what have you been your observations of him? He's been great. You know, he, he's, you know, like I said, I really don't care where you played at. You know, we played D3, Division One doesn't matter. It's what you do when you're here and what you earn when you're here. So uh, he's done a good job with everything we're asking him to do so at, to this point. And I think uh, he'll, he'll push for, for some time, for sure. I'm being a small school guy, as Paul. James Kowser seems like he's seeing more time in the middle rather than being mm -hmm. out on the edge, being a rusher. What are, you, what are you seeing from him so far in that transition? Yeah, we're, we, we know last year he did a lot in the rush. So, um, you know, we're trying to make him a linebacker so we can be utilized on all downs, not just maybe in the pass rush. So just trying to teach him that position to give him a chance to, to get his feet wet in the middle where he can make some of the, he's smart, he can make some of the calls for us. And he's done a good job. He's asked great questions, and um, he's an intelligent player. Bill Brown seems to be flashing. Uh, he had a strong practice today, not yeah. his first. What, what has he shown? And he's, he's, he's another good fit for us. I mean, he's 6'4", 6'5", 280, 275 pounds, and he come, you know, he's a good rusher. Um, he can play the run. He's been real active in there. Um, he's, he, again, he's learning the defense, the, just the, the technique and the footwork of everything we're asking him to do. So he's, uh, he's going to surprise some people, I think, this year. He surprised you so far? Um, no, I mean, I just, you know, like I said, I watched, before I took the job, I watched a lot of the games from a year ago. And when I got here, I watched some of the practices. And you could see, you know, I watched some of the practices in training camp, in the middle of the season, at the end of camp, just to kind of see, engage what was going on here. And uh, you could see his effort on the practice field was evident. So, you know, when he walked when he when he walked in here, I was like, this guy, this, this guy's ideally the right size for what we're looking for, and uh, he's been getting better every day. Going back to Hurst, why is he such a good fit for your defense? And what was your uh, reaction when he was sliding down the draft board in draft day? What was your what was going through your mind when that was happening? I was saying draft him right here. <laughs> I mean, you know. You, when you look at when you look at these players in the draft, you, you have an eye for what you're looking for from each the nose, the three technique, the ends, the middle linebacker, corners, whatever it may be. And when you watch him play at Michigan, he had certain traits for a three technique in our defense. And you know when he started to slide, and he was there for us to pick um, in the fifth round. I, I could you know I couldn't believe it really. And he's uh, he's just he's got great get off. He can penetrate the three techniques, the penetrator of our defense. So. He does a great job with that. He's going to have to learn, you know, big man's game a little bit where you don't get the double teams as much in college. You're going to get a lot more of that in, in the NFL. And obviously in the pass rush, he's slippery in the pass rush. He's got good good side-to-side -side movement, he's, and he's a powerful guy. Have you guys been notified? I know that this is all voluntary so far. Have you guys been notified one way or the other about whether or not Kalo Mack will be here next week? When no, I, I have not. You know, he, I'll have to work that out. And like I said, I don't get involved too much with that. I coach the guys that are here.